Hello, uh, today we are doing lab one. Uh, this is anthropometric measurements where we are going to learn how to take some basic measurements about external body dimensions on a subject. Uh, we are going to learn how to take height, weight, we will introduce the anthropometric tape measure and then take waist and hip circumference measurements uh, and then demonstrate how to use the nomogram found on the lab assignment. Uh, so first I was going to introduce some of the tools. Um, this is referred to as a stadiometer. So the process for using this would, would have the subject uh, remove their shoes, stand directly on the platform facing away from the device. Okay? Then we would slowly move the plank down, noting where these two black arrows intersect on the measurement tool. So we have inches on the left, centimeters um, on the right. We will record both of these for the lab assignment um, because we'll use the different units in the different calculations. Um, so let's go ahead and bring in our subject. Um, this is Morgan. Uh, what is your age, sir? 25. 25. Gender male? Okay, if you wouldn't remind, uh, mind removing your shoes for me. And stand directly on the platform facing that wall. <clears throat> so I want to make sure he, uh, his back is in contact with the stadiometer. I don't want him to lean back too much because this is not entirely stable, so just sort of some soft pressure. Uh, once his head is against the, the pole as well, I'm going to slowly lower. I'm going to apply light pressure here to smash down um, the hair. Some people that is an issue with, some it's not. Uh, then I'm going to take my reading. So Morgan is 75 and a half inches. And he is 191.5 centimeters. After we get our reading, I'll raise this up and ask him to step off the stadium. Uh, so next we will take the subject's weight using uh, what is known as a certified uh, balance scale. So more commonly referred to um, as a doctor's scale. Um, again, we will take this measurement with the subject's shoes off. As the administrator, I usually will stand on the back side of the scale. The subject will stand on the scale and face me. I typically like to ask the subject what do they anticipate that they weigh. That saves me from guessing. Once that person gives me a number, I will then move the big weight on the slide to the number that is closest to the number that they tell me without going over, okay? I'll get that one set, and then I'll move the top slide weight as far as I can, aiming for this pin to balance neatly between uh, the scale sides, okay? So again, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, I'll just turn this slightly. So we're good there. Go ahead and step on the scale, Morgan. Uh, and what do you anticipate that you weigh? 230, 235. So he says 230, 235. So I'm going to move the large weight to 200. These move in 50 pound increments. Then I will move the top slide to the area of 35 pounds. Once the scale starts to tip a little bit, I'm just going to barely nudge it with my finger until it is centered. And he is exactly 235. So either he very finely regulates his weight or he weighed himself before he did this. I'm not sure which. Uh, now this particular scale does not show uh, kilograms on it. We have another scale in our lab that has both pounds and kilograms. So what we will have to do then is divide Morgan's weight in pounds by 235 to get his weight in kilograms. And you can insert that onto the lab assignment. Okay? Um, we would then use his height in meters, his weight in kilograms to calculate his body mass index. Um, you can learn how to do that by referring to the lecture PowerPoint and the voiceover, and then the rankings are found there as well. Uh, the next measurement we're going to take is the waist and the hip circumference. So let me set this down. So to take anthropometric measurements, we're going to use an anthropometric tape measure, which is a spring-loaded tape measure uh, that is flexible. Okay? 
Um, notice that when we open this up, there are inches on one side, centimeters on the other. So there's the centimeters, here are the inches. We will typically take the, um, the measurements in centimeters and record them as such because the, the, the ratios are calculated using centimeters. Okay? So the two that we're going to learn are the two most commonly done, uh, the waist and the hip circumference measurements. One issue with these is there is not a universally standardized location for these measurements. Um, so we have the ACSM recommended measurement sites. That's what we're going to go with in class today. Uh, so for the waist, what we're looking at is the narrowest part of the torso. And that's obviously going to vary based upon the individual. Um, usually it's going to be located directly um, in the middle between the rib cage and the top of the hip. So it's not necessarily going to be lined up with the umbilicus. Some organizations say measure at the level of umbilicus. We are going to go with measuring at the, uh, the, um, the point of the narrowest position of the torso. So I'll have my subject uh, stand up, I'm sorry, raise the arms up. I'm going to go ahead and open up the tape measure. Uh, we can take these measurements over the clothing. I'm going to reach around with the tape measure. And I'm just going to pull it kind of tight to, to make sure I've found the narrowest point of the torso. Once I find that, I'm going to wrap the tape all the way around and line up my zero mark with a centimeter mark and we get 91.5 centimeters. Now we will take a second measurement. We'll go ahead and measure his hips first and then we'll come back and take a second measurement on the waist and the hip both just to make sure they're consistent. So for the hip, it's kind of the opposite. Rather than going with the narrowest point, now we're going to go with the area that has the widest girth. Okay? So usually wherever the glutes are the largest, that's where we're going to take the hip circumference measurement. So again, I'll have Morgan raise his arms up. It's usually easier just to sort of take a knee for this one after you reach around. So make sure you're on that point where the hips are the largest. You want to make sure your tape measure is, is relatively level with the ground. Again, apply some light pressure. So we get 114.5 centimeters there. Now I'm going to go back and take a second measurement at each location. So again, we're going to waste one more time just to make sure we're consistent. So I got 92 that time. Hip one more time. And I got 114.5 again, so very consistent. What we would then do is <clears throat> take the average of the two measurements, and those are the numbers we'll use to calculate our ratio. Now one more thing I wanted to show you um, for a way of predicting body fat percentage using these measurements, um, we can use what's known as a nomogram. So since Morgan is a male, we'll use the men's nomogram. If we had a female subject, we would use figure three on the right side of the page. We're going to use figure two on the left. We would locate his weight here, his abdominal or his waist circumference here and we'll make a line and wherever it crosses the center line, that's gonna be his predicted body fat percentage. So let me just look at my numbers again. So he was 235, waist circumference. <clears throat> was 91.5, so what I would do is then connect those two dots I'll hold this up once I get it set here. So it's crossing the percent body fat line at right between the 10 and the 15. So his predicted body fat percentage based upon um, using the waist circumference measurement was 12.5%. So pretty good work. Do keep in mind, there is a greater than plus or minus 5% percent 
error with um, that measurement, which is why it is not necessarily a, a recommended tool for assessing body composition. So um, I gave you the numbers that you need to know. You will need to go back and calculate his weight in kilograms. Once you do that, you'll need to calculate his BMI score and then rank his BMI and then calculate the waist to hip circumference ratio by dividing the waist by the hip. Okay? Uh, that's all for lab one. If you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to reach out via email or commenting on the video. Thank you.